let's do this. So what do we know about this exam? So candidates are worried about the global situation, which is impacting their preparation, of course. And also what we see right now, more and more people are registering for the CFA exam, given that they have now enough time while they're staying at home. You may have also received emails from CFA Institute if you have registered for the exam about the postponement of the exam. And this webinar, like I said, is going to tackle how to handle this situation while you're planning for your exam. So I'll just start saying that um, good luck, prepare well while staying with your family and maintaining the physical distancing with each other. And uh, what are we seeing from our candidates? The kind of feeling we're getting from them, we can divide this feeling into probably two categories. So one kind of emotion or feeling that we are seeing from our candidates are basically they're frustrated because they have prepared so well till March since they registered for the exam. So we just want to say to those students that you did not waste any of the time because you understand that CFA exam comes up with a volume of about 5,000 pages. And uh, you need to remember those stuff for the long term anyway. So you did not waste your time. That's the first message I want to give. And we also see a second emotion from a lot of our candidates where they're saying, you know what? We have a lot of more time right now, so let's just take a break. And uh, that I have some reservation, which I'm going to explain in a bit, that if more and more students start doing this, candidates will be really behind on their studies because of this, and the syllabus of the exam is actually huge. So with that, let's talk about what do we know about the exam first. The first thing is the June 2020 exam of all levels has been postponed. We know this. And for level one candidates, the options are you either register for the December 2020 and your deadline to register is September 9th, or you can register for February 2021. And that's a new kind of exam that CFA Institute is going to administer, which is going to be computerized exam. And the deadline for those to register from November 20 um, by November 22nd. For level two and three candidates, the options are either you'll go for December 2020, which is an outlier for CFA Institute because they have never taken level two and level three in December. Or you go for June 2021. There is no February exam for them. It's just basic cycle for level two and three. And the deadline to register for those is March 17th. No new registration for level two. This is important, so I wanna just put a star mark there. There is no new registration for level two and three in December 2020. It's basically whoever registered for June 2020 will be transferred to the December exam. And CFA Institute have not offered any kind of refund because it's just in postponement of the exam due to the global pandemic. So I want to also tell you something about how the level one exam is changing in 2021, because a lot of you are probably thinking, should I register for the December or the February exam? In 2021, the exam will be computer-based across about 400 plus locations. Right now we have about, I think 190 locations all over the world, I'm not sure. And CFA Institute believe the computer-based format will better reflect a workplace setting where nowadays Excel and other software tools are heavily used. And they also started this level one exam in four different settings in 2021. Level two and three is the same, one sitting in June, but for level one, you have four sittings each quarter in the second month, so it's going to be either February, May, August, or November. And it's not a specific date for the exam. There will be an exam window of about six to seven days. For example, 
the February 2021 level one exam, that's probably what you are thinking to register, will be conducted between February 23rd and March 1st. You can't yet re-register for the exam because the registration will open on June 16th and you'll get an email around that time to register for the February 2021. The only exam you can register for now is December 2020. The other big change, I'm going to put another star mark on this, that the number of questions will reduce to 180. Currently, we have 240 questions. You have to answer in six hours. So the exam is normally used to be divided into two, three hour session, but now you have 235 minute session, which is two hours and 15 minutes each. So you have to answer about 90 questions in each setting. But keep in mind, you still have about 1.5 minutes per question. So that's kind of a new stuff for CFA candidates who have probably failed the exam before, or also for the teachers who have been teaching CFA like me for the last seven years or, or more, to navigate how to adjust the readings based on that. So we had a discussion with CFA Institute that why they moved the exam from six hours to four and a half hours. What CFA Institute says, their research indicate that the accurate measurement of concept mastery has evolved and that 180 questions and a proportional reduction in the length of time for the exam is more suited to today's world because people are impatient on average. They don't want to sit there for six hours. So, but I, another thing I want to tell you that if you write the level one exam in December, you can only rewrite this in August. You can't register for February because there has to be a six month lag between rewriting an exam for any level in CFA. So you either can write in August or November. So the question is, the biggest question that we have is how these changes will affect the preparation for the exam if you're going for 2021. I have a short answer for you, and the short answer is that it should not affect your preparation at all because the volume of information in the curriculum is not being reduced. You still have to read those 5,000 pages. And the consistent pass rate, which has been 41 to 43% over the last several sittings, shows that the Institute is committed to upholding a rigorous standard of testing. So it would be a mistake for you to think that a more frequent computer-based exam with fewer questions will be some ways easier to pass. Okay, so personally what I think, if I have to write this exam, I would register for December 2020 rather because the pass rate is still gonna be 41 to 43% and the, probably the magic passing number that no one actually knows, but I normally tell my students that it's about 70% plus. So I would rather get more questions, even though it's the same time, 1.5 minutes, I'm gonna be probably tired by the, by, the, by the sixth hour of the exam, but I would still want to get more questions and more time so that I have a better chance of passing. That's my own personal opinion. But if you're going for February 2021, which is not an issue, but the ideal approach will be still require a significant time and commitment and the practice of the question. In Princeton Review, where I am the content director here, we have the, our self-paced CFA program package that offer a lot of adaptive question banks and exam-focused video lectures. And this will be valuable too in ensuring that happens. So you will, you'll be doing the drills, a lot of, we call them drills in our settings and the mock exams all online anyway. So that will probably prepare you better for the computer ed setting because you will not probably have any piece of paper to write anything. So next, what are the major concerns that you can see from your students right now? So I'm going to just tell you the concern first, and then I'm going to answer one by one. First concern is, will I be able to study the next level for June 2021? 
by next level I mean level 2 yes if you write the level 1 exam in December and pass if you fail of course not because you have to wait till August to write the exam again but the answer is no if you write the level 1 exam in February because there is a so little window for you to register as well as prepare for June 2020 level 2 exam so keep that into mind before you move the exam to February personally I would keep it at December like I said there are several reasons this is the second reason I have for you so the next question is is the curriculum staying the same CFA Institute already answered that for us that all exam administered in 2020 and 2021 will be based on the current 2020 curriculum. That gives you a little bit of breathing space that no matter I move the exam to 2021, I don't have to really buy new prep or um, new books or maybe new question bank somewhere from, another, from uh, someone like Princeton Review because the same curriculum is going to stay for 2020 and 2021. The other questions that we are normally getting from our candidates would will TPR or the Princeton Review will extend the access to my self-paced course that I already bought. I'm going to answer this in a bit. Will this extra time to study impact the pass rate? That's a good question that we are getting. Will the exam be harder given that we have more time? I'm worried about forgetting stuff, what to do. And I have a lot of extra time now. Should I just wait and study in fall, which means September, October, and November? So I've kind of answered the first two questions. I'm going to answer the last five, one by one. Okay, so first part is, what's the impact on our Princeton Review CFA self paced product? So will it be extended? The answer is yes, we're always with you. The June 2020 access will be extended till March 1st, 2021. So no matter if you write the exam in December or February, and the window for February exam is still March 1st, it, your subscription will be extended. And if for the global pandemic situation, because the scientists are saying we may see a second wave, if there is any further deferral of the exam will also be accommodated as we receive more information from CFA Institute. The other thing at Princeton Review they're offering is a 14-day partial free review of the 2020 Level 1 CFA program self-paced. So if you never purchase that product, you can always go and check the quality and then make a decision on this. They're also offering free access to 50 trickiest question. I would rather call them 50 trickiest as well as most testable question for the level one exam. And finally, the Princeton Review is also launching a level one CFA live online classes to help the candidates prepare better for the exam. Because we had an intern uh, discussion and feeling internally that if some people are cramming or taking a break right now and they may start studying around october or november so it's a good time to offer a live online classes so the students can prepare better and will be taught by expert instructors it's it's sort of a boot camp setting where the classes will start in october 2020 but about the schedule and everything more info are coming by june so please keep an eye on the princeton review website or on your email. The next question about the passing rate and the difficulty level of the exam. So given that the June exam has moved to either December or February, the question that we're getting, will the pass rate be higher given that we have more time now? And the other one, will the exam be harder? So I'm gonna answer those questions from the guideline that we have received from CFA Institute. First of all, let's talk about the passing rate and CFA Institute call them MPS, minimum passing score. 
So the CFA Institute Board of Governors will adhere to the same process in setting the minimum passing score for the December exam. So there's no changes there because the main objective of these exams or, or, or setting a pass rate has always been consistent standard competency level across years. So what they do, CFA Institute keeps in mind both the exam difficulty and candidates demonstrated competency before they come up with the passing score. So pretty much there is no change. If the exam is normally how it works, because I know this exactly how they grade this exam. If you're thinking, you know what, it's a computer software that is grading my multiple choice questions. Yeah, that's the step one, but there is always a step two, where a real human being like us, an instructor, is actually going over the whole exam and then find out, you know what, this particular question is answered by only 20% candidate in the whole world correctly. So in that case, I think probably we should remove that question or maybe put less weight on that question. And they find out if there is a question that is answered by almost 95% of the candidate correctly, they know that it's relatively easy. Let's either remove or put less weight on that question. So they always adjust their exam for uh, mean passing a score for exam difficulties is not a big deal. The pass rate will still fluctuate as it does every year, but that doesn't mean the exam would be difficult or not. Okay. Will the exam be harder? See if it would also answer that question. Okay. Exam question have always been designed to measure the mastery of the topics. And there will absolutely be no difference in that goal. So they pretty much will set up the exam the same way they have been setting so far. And there is absolutely no difference in this. And I wanted to also discuss how the passing rate of the exam is actually administered. So that's why they never really tell you what's exactly the passing mark. But from our experience, we normally say if you get about 70 to 75 percent, you should be fine. OK, now the big question how to tackle the exam preparation. Because you have more time to study, there is no going back on this. You have several options, okay? The first option is you can afford to take a very, very short two to three weeks break. I would rather say don't take any, but depending on the location you are in, in the world, you probably should take some break um, and it's many places. For example, right now I'm in Vancouver. We have a summer going on, right? It's beautiful outside. So to keep the physical distancing, we can still go for a break or go out with family, but you can afford a very short break if you want to. But I would strongly recommend this, that do not stop studying at all, okay? So what happens normally, let me give you the background why I'm saying this. Normally, if you writing the exam in June, and then, I should probably write this down. If you're writing the exam in June 2020, and if you registered around January 2020, normally people need to study about 15 hours per week to get to that magic 300 hours, right? But suddenly now we have 20 to 25 more weeks to study, suddenly. So that means the time pressure is definitely reduced. So I would still recommend finish reading everything I did not say do a lot of practice or do a lot of mock exam. I'm just saying finish reading everything by mid-July and then take a short one or two week break. That should be the right approach because in your mind, you'll also feel that, you know what, I've at least finished reading them once. I deserve a break. Okay, so with this extra 20 to 25 weeks, uh, you can probably now look at about instead of doing 15 hours a week you can look at five to seven hours 
a week of study. So that comes up to about an hour or two study per day. So you are locked down, so it's a perfect time to hone your knowledge in the CFA study. So what you can do now, you can go very deep. For example, you can watch the Princeton Review videos multiple times to see what the instructors are saying, what's important, what's not for the exam. You can do the drills that we offer more than 1500 plus question multiple times and go very deep to understand the concept behind it instead of memorizing because you can keep the memorizing there's a bit of memorizing needed but you can keep it for november so because you have a lot of time right now and what i would say you ramp back up your study in fall at about september and consider taking the Princeton Review live online class if needed, because if you may have forgot some of the concept and some of the concepts are not clear, you can listen to a live and a live session that will keep you on a schedule once again, which is difficult for students when they suddenly take a break and they have to restart. That's why I recommend, normally recommend all of my students to write their level one exam in their third or fourth year of their school because they're always in this study mode. Because the moment they go and work, suddenly they have 40 hours of work, no matter you're working from home or not, and suddenly they lose that time. And it's very difficult for them to go back and to maintain a schedule. And of course, with more time, you have a chance to practice more. You have more time to work on deals and really go deep into all the concept and be an expert on those concepts before the exam. So my recommendation, divide the exam into two parts or divide the preparation into two parts. Part one, which is now, until mid-July and part two it's September, October and November. So the first part, let's divide them. Okay. So the first part is from now till mid-July, you try to understand the concept and have the technical knowledge to ensure you have mastered the CFA syllabus. But how to do this? Read the curriculum thoroughly with the help of the Princeton Review notes and the videos by expert instructors and complete the drills per reading. We never said the mock exam yet. Find the knowledge gap and relearn that subject after the drills. You see exactly where you're weak. And the one way of finding the knowledge gap is that if you're not doing about 60 to 65% in the drills, that is something wrong. And one thing also keep in mind, when you do the drills, do them in a timed setting. Let's say if there are 20 questions, you're practicing, you should do this in 30 minutes. And also do not use up all the mock exam until the last couple of months, which is here, part two. Okay, you can try one, but keep most of the mock exam from Princeton Review as well as CFA Institute for the second part of the preparation. Okay, so, now, what do you do in the second part after the break? Maybe you can take a break here. One or two weeks after the break, what do you do? This is the time for the final review and retention. OK, retention is important because the, some memorization is required, especially formulas. Keep the mock exam, most of this for this time, as I already explained. However, at the beginning of September, right after the break, you can take one of the mock exam just as a diagnostic tool at the beginning of September to figure out exactly where you are, exactly what are the lackings. Then take more and more mock exam at the exam date, approaches, rewatch the videos, do the drills and go over the mock exams once again and read the CFA Institute back of the chapter questions, blue box questions to know more about the concepts. Okay, so this is pretty much what our main suggestion of how to tackle this exam and what we know about the exam so far. So in conclusion, what I can say that if postponing the CFA is the worst thing that happened to you right now, 
look at what's going on in the whole world, right? If the postponing the CFA is the worst thing that happened to you, then you actually got away very, very lightly. Okay, so don't be sad or frustrated because you have more time now. Actually, I'm personally also looking at the pandemic a bit positively for me, especially, uh, first of all, I did not lose my teaching job, which is important. And then uh, I have more time now. I'm actually doing a self-evaluation of myself, things that I used to do before, that I, for, uh, that I used to be very good at doing some stuff like singing or playing cricket or, or doing some other stuff. I'm just going back to it right now, right? So also for the students who are looking for a job or graduating soon, it's a very frustrating time for them too. I normally recommend them, you know what, why not you take an, an online course and learn more about this? There are so many resources here and there. So again, I'm gonna say this once again, do not completely stop the preparation. Maybe reduce it from 15 hours to five to seven hours per week. Okay, divide the preparation into two parts like I already explained, one from now to mid-July, then take a break, and then September, October, November, you ramp it up again. Slow down, learn the technical stuff, do more practice, and go deep. And this is also important because if, you, if you're in, listening to the webinar, you're probably in your third or fourth year of the school, or you're graduating in June maybe, or you are in the and a young junior analyst or working somewhere right now, if you have not registered for the exam, one thing is guaranteed, the job market will die, dry up, definitely. So please do register for the CFA exam because this is the gold standard in finance. Nowadays, investment banks hardly even call people who don't have the level one done. I'm not kidding, I know because I'm, 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 a, I'm a lecturer of a university, so I know how this whole, uh, interview process and hiring process work. So you have time to do invest in your human capital right now. That's what people did when they had 2007-8 financial crisis. When the 2007-8 financial crisis started, you know what, the timing was really bad. I also started working in investment bank in 2008, right, which was a difficult time for me. And then I realized, you know what, I probably need to add more to my career. So then I did my level one and some other stuff one by one. Do not miss any communication from CFA Institute. They normally send you an email if you are their candidate or check their Twitter, go to the website, just write maybe COVID-19 CFA, it will show up on Google. Never miss a communication from them. And of course, if you are Princeton Review uh, customer, never, uh, miss an email from them to see what's happening to your product, what are the new products coming up in the market, etc. And also keep an eye for our Princeton Review Live online classes and other CFA products that is coming up really soon. So with this, I just want to say uh, goodbye and good luck. I do not use the term social distancing at all because I think people should still be social, at least online, talking to their friends and family. So I rather say call it physical distancing, so maintain that at least for the next six to nine months, depending on where you are in the world right now. Keep talking to your friends, family, and colleagues online. Do regular exercise to keep the anxiety level down, and do a lot of practice and register for the CFA exam if you have not done yet. So that's pretty much it from my side.